There have been some important developments in SD-WAN technology over the last year. We need to continually assess changes in key technology so we can make informed decisions and move our businesses forward. Let's take a look at some of these developments so you can determine whether they might be important to your organization. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG. And while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of my employer. SD-WAN, or software-defined wide area networking, is now well over a decade old as a technology. The term SD-WAN was coined in 2014 by Cisco, well after the technology's introduction. So SD-WAN is now considered a mature service. I'm not going to go into SD-WAN in detail. I have several SD-WAN videos you can watch that will explain fully why SD-WAN has become the dominant branch connectivity strategy today. For those unfamiliar with SD-WAN, here's a 45-second overview. Traditional site-to-site -site connectivity models relied upon closed private networks in the past. Typically, we saw NPLS or private lines connecting sites back to a centralized data center. Those data centers housed the applications and security stack for the organization, and internet access was concentrated at that data center behind that security stack. This provided ease of management and concentration of security tools, creating a strong security posture. These networks were expensive, but they guaranteed quality of service and security, as well as reliability. Over the last decade, the compute models changed though. More applications were pushed to the cloud. Real-time applications such as video and web conferencing required minimal latency and more bandwidth. Redundancy requirements forced public internet connections as failover at all sites. So security was pushed out to the branches. Management became much more complex. As a result, the data center became less important as a central computing hub and distributed security made the centralized security platform less important as well. This gave rise to SD-WAN. SD-WAN is best used with redundant public internet connections, typically eliminating the expensive private connections and allowing the organization to purchase whatever internet is available at that site. SD-WAN enhances quality of service over the public internet by determining the best route for individual sessions or packets. SD-WANs are frequently purchased with next generation firewall and increasingly other cloud-based security services. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Management is accomplished through a single portal, ensuring consistency across all locations. SD-WAN allows users at each enabled location to access clouded applications directly over the public internet, bypassing the need to route through a data center hub and enhancing performance. So SD-WAN reduces costs and management effort while improving performance without sacrificing, and many say actually enhancing security. What's great is that SD-WAN is mature and reliable. SD-WAN is offered by the most reputable names in the networking industry and has, in my view, completely replaced MPLS or private line for new network deployments. Most mature technologies enter into a stage referred to as the plateau of productivity, according to Gartner's hype cycle. I think we can safely say that SD-WAN is well entrenched in that productivity phase. What we typically see in this phase of technology life cycle is a stagnation of product development. The industry focuses more on consolidation and adoption rather than new capabilities. The easy stuff has already been invented and new capabilities come slower. However, I don't see the development within SD-WAN slowing. SD-WAN remains a dynamic and evolving technology as capabilities are pushed into the cloud rather than residing on a heavy appliance on site. And with the computing scale of the cloud, additional services are easy to add and the industry continues to move forward. Here are some of the developments that you should know about as you evaluate your SD-WAN strategy. Number one, secure remote access. The biggest development I see in SD-WAN is the coupling of secure remote access. The work from home framework changed the focus of all IT professionals from securing a location to securing an individual or the data itself. Some forward-looking SD-WAN providers had already incorporated secure remote access before the pandemic aligning their strategy with Gartner's Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, S-A-S-C. Other SD-WAN providers have since paired secure remote access capabilities with their SD-WAN platforms. In fact, it's small office locations for some customers are eliminating SD-WAN architecture and just using the secure remote access of their SD-WAN provider. What you lose here is application prioritization and seamless failover but that may be acceptable for a few users who might work from home if necessary. For a location with five or fewer people, 
Broadband connectivity is probably adequate for all applications and redundancy is not absolutely critical. Well, you might have a, a wireless redundant option rather than a fixed circuit option for redundancy. What you gain is a lower cost structure. Number two, co-manage SD-WAN. Early on, enterprises with considerable staff of network architects purchased SD-WAN devices and deployed and managed those devices themselves. This provided ultimate control, similar to what they had in their prior WAN environment. Over time, however, organizations have realized that SD-WAN does not require that much care and feeding. The talents of the network architect are better used in strategy, policy, and design rather than maintaining the appliances. Co-management is now the most popular strategy, where SD-WAN service providers maintaining the device and its high-level configurations, and the customer is managing the application policy within the SD-WAN platform. This gives clients the sense of control that they need to run their network while delegating the non-value-added work to a vendor. Some clients are completely outsourcing the management of the WAN, and this option is frequently paired with a network carrier creating a true network-as-a-service environment. Wireless-only SD-WAN is number three. Now, this option has been around since wireless was integrated into SD-WAN years ago, but with the increased mobility of the workforce and supply chain issues affecting the delivery of wired services, wireless SD-WAN has caught on. Typically, with just a single wireless service, SD-WAN prioritizes the application, so limited bandwidth is optimally utilized and eliminates non-business activity on the network, saving the aggregate bandwidth costs. Of course, 5G makes this a very interesting access strategy, but at least in the, U in the United States, it's only really applicable for certain low utilization use cases uh, because of the cost at this point. Number four, SD branch. Software defined branch office technology is an extension of the SD-WAN concept. The monitoring and management of branch lands, access points, print resources, and other branch peripherals reduces the need for on-site support and improves the service to the branch. The SD-WAN architecture is core to SD branch delivery. Number six, security tools. Look for SD-WAN providers to continue to expand horizontally into other SASE categories, such as secure web gateway, data loss prevention, remote browser, etc. The industry is very fluid right now and the SD-WAN is at the center of most security strategies. Going forward, SD-WAN continues to march towards becoming the core inner office connectivity technology. We'll see automation and AI begin to make its way into the industry, allowing the platform to make adjustments in real time. So SD-WAN is mature, but not idle. There are lots of growth edges in the industry, and it's important for users who have a well thought out strategy before making an SD-WAN decision. If you'd like to continue the conversation around SD-WAN or any of the other technologies that I discuss on this channel, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the description of this video. If you got some value from this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, a like below. That helps this video reach more people like you. And if you want your, to find your way back to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is by hitting that subscribe button also below. That will put my videos in your feed and allow you to return to this channel at your convenience. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.